Okay, so let's talk about disorders of the skin. Remember, sunlight is known to cause burns to the skin, but UV radiation can also cause changes to the skin that may lead to skin cancer. So the first couple of disorders we're gonna talk about are carcinomas or skin cancers. So squamous cell carcinoma originates in the keratinocytes of the stratum spinosum, that spiny layer of the epidermis. And this usually occurs in sun exposed areas like the backs of the hands, the tips of the ears, the face, and the back of the neck. It can metastasize to the lymph glands very easily if it's left untreated, but usually responds pretty well to surgical removal. Next is basal cell carcinoma. This is the most common type of skin cancer. It originates in the stratum basale, and it involves the dermis and the epidermis. So it usually affects um, the sun exposed areas just like the squamous cell carcinoma, but unlike squamous cell carcinoma, the basal cell carcinoma does not metastasize. So this is uh, a little bit easier to treat. We just um, surgically remove it and it can grow, however, and still cause significant ulceration and damage to the skin and surrounding tissues. So it's still important to have it removed if it is found. Malignant melanoma is the least common type of skin cancer, but it is the most deadly. This cancer originates in the melanocytes of the stratum basale, and it metastasizes very quickly. It can be fatal if it's not treated right away. So let's look at some root and combining forms. Um, melanin, we know, is the black pigment that's found in melanocytes. So that term melanocyte, uh, melano comes from the Greek melanin, meaning black, and site is the ending that, the suffix ending that means cell. So melanocyte is the pigment producing cell. And melanoma, the ending oma means tumor. So a melanoma is a tumor that arises from the uh, pigment producing cells or the melanocytes. All right, another uh, disorder is a decubitus ulcer. Decubitus ulcer is basically the medical term for a pressure ulcer or commonly referred to as a bed sore. Uh, this term comes from uh, the prefix D meaning from and cubitus meaning lying down. So these wounds result from lying down in one position for long periods of time and the pressure of the bed or the surface and the bony prominences of the body like the lower spine and the heels um, cause a lot of pressure and it cuts off the blood supply to the skin. Um, the tissue starts to die from lack of oxygen and the protective barrier of the skin is lost and the, the tissue starts to break down. So these are very common, um, like in the sacrum and the lower back, the heels, sometimes in the elbow. Um, this is why mobility is so important in bed bound patients. In the hospital, we turn patients every two hours. We try to get them up and out of bed and moving as soon as possible. Uh, decubitus ulcers, sometimes we shorten the word to decubes. Uh, decubes begin as reddened areas on the skin, especially over bony areas, and with continued pressure, they can blister and eventually the, the skin starts to wear away, leaving open wounds. And the wounds can be superficial or deep, and they can extend through the subcutaneous muscle tissue and even down into the bone. Uh, nutritional status of the patient is very important as well as mobility. Um, and that affects the wound healing. Dermatitis, dermatitis literally means inflammation of the skin. Remember, derm means skin, and that uh, itis ending means inflammation of. Atopic dermatitis refers to an inflammation of the skin caused by a allergic reaction. So let's look at some of these terms. Your book uh, goes into some explanations here with these terms. So an allergen is something that produces a hypersensitivity reaction. So something like latex or pollen or poison ivy is an allergen. If we are describing something as causing a reaction, we would say it is allergenic, like latex is an allergenic agent. Um, you may have heard the term hypoallergenic, meaning something is less likely to cause an allergic reaction. An allergy is the hypersensitivity reaction to the substance, right? An allergy is just the, the hypersensitivity reaction itself. And then finally, we describe a person as being allergic 
to a specific substance, right? So note the difference between allergic and allergenic. One means the person is having, or the person has a reaction to, some, to something. The other means the substance that causes a reaction. So the element gen, that just means um, to create, right? It just creates the reaction. Um, and then the adjective. So what are the adjective terms? What describes the term? So anything with that IC ending is going to be the adjective term. So allergenic, hypoallergenic, and allergic. Those are the adjective forms of those terms listed there. All right, eczema. Eczema is sometimes called atopic dermatitis. Um, it's just not caused by an allergy. They're kind of umbrella terms. Um, classified as chronic inflammatory, uh, chronic inflammatory skin condition, not necessarily caused by an allergy. So atopic dermatitis is uh, an inflammatory skin condition caused by an allergy. Eczema is a chronic inflammatory skin condition not necessarily caused by an allergic reaction. Um, it had it's uh, dry, itchy, inflamed patches of skin. It can be seen at any age, and there's many different types of eczema. But for this presentation, we're just going to talk about eczema in general. Um, it's very itchy, so it can lead to um, scratching, and scratching can lead to excoriation or excoriated skin, and that's just um, skin that is scratched. And excoriation is just a scratch. And if it gets scratched too much, it can cause weeping. Um, and weeping is just when the skin starts to secrete serous fluid, S-E-R-O-U-S, fluid. Serous fluid is just a, a clear, yellowish-tinged uh, tissue fluid that seeps out from the skin. Ichthyosis is an inherited or acquired skin condition that results in dry, scaly skin. So an inherited skin condition is one that is passed down for, uh, genetically from your parents. Um, an acquired skin condition, um, one that may be induced from something like um, a disease or disorder or a disease condition or medication induced. So ichthyosis can result from either one of those. Um, and it results in very dry, scaly skin. And the, the dry flakes can resemble fish scales and the skin becomes very tight. Um, ichthy, the, the word part ichthy means fish and osis means condition. So that you can see here in this picture that the, um, the, the skin resembles fish skin, like fish scales. There's no cure. Um, however, if it's an acquired condition from like a medication, for example, if you reduce the dose of medication or eliminate the medication, then perhaps the condition will subside or reduce severity. Um, if it's an inherited condition, it can be treated with creams and medicated baths and things like that. All right, let's talk about some viral infections of the skin. The human papillomavirus um, uh, causes warts, also called verrucas. Um, the human papillomavirus is abbreviated HPV. We're gonna talk about HPV more in chapter eight, um, but you can see here um, pictures of warts on the skin. Varicella zoster is the virus that causes chickenpox. You can see chickenpox on a baby here on the left. And the chickenpox results in something called macules, papules, or vesicles. So macules are flattened, um, discolored spots on the skin. Papules are solid, elevated lesions on the skin. And vesicles are similar to papules, but the vesicles are filled with fluid. So again, macules are flat, discolored spots, papules are solid, elevated lesions, and vesicles are just fluid-filled lesions. Um, once the, uh, the varicella zoster virus resolves itself, it doesn't go away. It lives dormant on peripheral nerves in the body. It never goes away and it can reemerge later as the herpes zoster virus. And that you can see on the right, we sometimes call it shingles and it lives on the nerve. And you can see, see how the herpes zoster virus, um, it's in that straight line that actually follows the line of the nerve. We call it a dermatome. Um, it's in that line and it's very, very painful. That eruption is very painful. Um, and then you can actually still have pain after the rash resolves itself. So you have a lot of pain. And if those, um, those vesicles are open, they will 
weep fluid um, and it's actually contagious so you need to make sure and varicella zoster is also contagious so you need to make sure you don't come in contact with the fluid um, that's weeping from those sores. All right, some fungal infections of the skin. Fungal infections are generally known as tinea infections and they're named for their location. So this is a picture of tinea pettis, which is commonly called athlete's foot. Um, causes a lot of itching, redness, and peeling of the skin. Fungus like, uh, fungi like to live in warm, moist places. So think of hot, sweaty feet inside socks and shoes. Um, so it's, it grows in that area between the toes and under the toes. Uh, tinea capitis is commonly called cradle cap and tinea corporis is commonly called ringworm. And ringworm, there's no worms involved, it's a fungal infection, but ringworm is a, a common rash that grows in a circular pattern. It can be found anywhere on the body. Um, let's see, the next one is tinea cruris, which is commonly called jack itch. And then tinea versicolor is also called pityriasis versicolor. And this one causes um, the normal, uh, it interferes with the normal pigmentation of the skin, on, usually on the trunk and the shoulders and the neck, and it discolors the skin. So it causes abnormal discoloration, like you can see here, the patchy discoloration on the, the back here. So this, this picture shows you a candida infection, which candida is a yeast-like fungus. It's a, it's a different organism. It's a yeast, which is similar to a fungus. This is candida in the mouth. Um, candida, it's a, normal, um, it's a normal yeast that lives in our bodies. However, if, it's, if something happens and it overgrows, it can cause this uh, white, pasty-like um, growth in the mouth or uh, any mucous membrane or on the skin around the nails. So candidiasis is the condition of having this overgrowth. So thrush is what we call it if it's in the mouth. Um, you can see it as diaper rash in infants. Um, thrush you can see in um, you can see it in infants. You can also see it in patients who are undergoing chemotherapy or radiation or have some other um, immune compromising um, dis disease or disorder. All right, so let's look at the difference. We're gonna talk about parasitic infections, but let's look at the difference between um, infection and infestation. So an infection generally involves a microorganism entering the host and disrupting the normal physiology of the host, like a bacteria enters the bloodstream. An infestation usually involves like a parasite or uh, another organism like a tick or something um, that is living on the outside of an organism that comes in contact with the organism and feeds off the other off the host organism. Okay, so something like you know, let's go back for a second. So something like candida um, or candida is an infection. Something like um, tinea pettis or tinea corporis. Those would be infections because they're actually entering the host. Even though they're on the surface, they're entering the host. Something like lice would be an infestation. These are bugs or microorganisms. They're, they're parasites that are living on the skin surface. So lice are small wingless um, parasites that live on the blood of the host. The singular of lice is louse. So the picture shows on the left shows you one singular louse. The singular on, or I'm sorry, the picture on the right shows you an infestation of lice. The condition of having the infestation of lice is called pediculosis. So that's that term there, pediculosis. Um, technically, um, having an infestation on the head is called pediculosis capitis. And then having uh, an infestation on the whole body is pediculosis corporis. Cor corpora meaning body. Another parasitic infestation is scabies, sometimes called itch mites. 
a picture of the scabies mite is there on the left. And scabies are awful. This will send any nurse running for the hills if they hear they have a patient with scabies. This is the only thing that actually creeps me out in this whole entire slideshow is scabies. Scabies are tiny burrowing mites that they actually burrow under their under the skin and lay their eggs under the skin. It makes me itch just, just giving this lecture. Um, so these are tiny little mites that burrow under their skin and lay their eggs under your skin. That's so gross. Um, and it causes an intense itching. Um, you see pictures of the rash there. It causes intense itching, um, especially in skin folds like the waist, the groin, um, under the breasts, in the armpits. Ugh, just awful. Um, and they can be transmitted from person to person through prolonged contact. So household members, um, sexual contact, um, nurses who spend a whole lot of time in one patient's room who has scabies. Ugh. So yes. All right. So let's change the, the slide because that's enough about scabies. All right. Moving on. Let's talk about bacterial infections because I would rather take care of anything but scabies. So um, Staphylococcus aureus. Um, quick note, note that anytime you write the name of a bacterium, it is in italics. So Staphylococcus aureus is the name of the bacterium. Generally, we just shorten it to staph. So you may have heard of a staph infection. Uh, staph is the most common bacterium to invade the body. It causes uh, wound infections like the one you see here. Um, it can also cause uh, pimples, uh, boils. Um, something called furuncles. Uh, furuncles is a uh, furuncle is an infected hair follicle. Carbuncles are clusters of infected hair follicles. Um, it also causes impetigo, which is this picture here. Impetigo is a superficial skin infection, which is characterized by those honey-colored crusts. Um, that's the key there. Those honey-colored crusts, um, and. Uh, the staph infection can also lead to cellulitis. I don't have a picture of cellulitis, but cellulitis is a, um, a deeper tissue infection. So it's, um, it, the infection has gone down to the uh, subcutaneous connective tissue, and it just appears very red and swollen and painful, and it can spread um, very, not very quickly, but pretty quickly. It'll, it'll spread through the subcutaneous tissue, and you need IV antibiotics to, um, to treat it. You can't just put a, a topical antibiotic on it. You need IV antibiotics to treat cellulitis. This is necrotizing fasciitis. Notice the spelling of fasciitis. It has two eyes in it. So necrotizing fasciitis is also known as the flesh-eating disease. Um, this occurs when certain strains of staph or sometimes the streptococcus bacteria produce toxins that are so toxic that they start to digest the surrounding tissue. Um, this can start very suddenly and it can spread very quickly. Um, and it will spread into the surrounding uh, subcutaneous and muscle tissue. And if you Google images of this, you will see sometimes it can be a very small area and sometimes it can be a very large area. So again, the destruction can occur very suddenly and it can spread very rapidly. Um, it's usually treated with surgical removal of the, the infected or dead tissue um, and heavy doses of IV antibiotics. Um, the incident of death or the risk of death is somewhere around 30 to 35 percent with this disease. And these patients are usually treated in burn units because they need such extensive wound care. And burn units are great places for wound care of this type. All right, let's talk about collagen diseases. Remember, collagen is that uh, strong, flexible protein that was found in connective tissue throughout the body. So now we're talking about uh, diseases of collagen. And collagen provides strength and flexibility for the skin, but it's also found in other connective tissues throughout the, the body. So diseases of collagen um, have a profound effect systemically. Systemic means throughout the whole system, the whole body. So systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE. SLE is an autoimmune disease. Most autoimmune diseases tend to affect women more than men. I'm not sure why, but they do. So SLE is no exception. It usually occurs in women more than men, and it causes inflammation in multiple organs. There's several different forms. 
Uh, cutaneous lupus, for example, is limited to just the skin. Um, but systemic lupus uh, produces characteristic skin lesions, including what you see here, this butterfly-shaped rash on the face. This is not the picture from your book, but the picture from your book, you couldn't get a good um, idea of the butterfly shape of the rash, so I, I changed it to this picture. The, the disease also is characterized by joint pain, fever, and fatigue, but for the skin lecture, I decided to put this picture here. Rosacea, rosacea comes from the Latin term meaning rosy, and it produces this facial rash, which is kind of similar to lupus, but you can see here that the um, blood vessels are more pronounced with rosacea, and the rosacea rash tends to uh, flare up and go away more than the one in lupus. The cause is unknown, um, and it does have some systemic complications, but the, the rash is more pronounced in rosacea. Alcohol, spicy food, temperature changes, things like that can flare up the rosacea rash um, more significantly than the lupus rash. Scleroderma is another autoimmune disease, um, usually occurs more often in women than in men. Sclero means hard, uh, derm, you already know derm means skin. So in this disease, it's a chronic condition that's characterized by hardening and shrinking of the skin. So the skin uh, starts to feel leathery and hardened. Remember, collagen affects lots of different places in the body, so the joints start to become swollen, stiff, painful, um, but it can also affect the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, the digestive tract. So you start stiffening um, connective tissue in the lungs and makes breathing a problem. You start you know, stiffening connective tissue in the digestive tract and the kidneys and, you know, suddenly you have all kinds of problems. So scleroderma is a, a really um, tricky disease to treat. The cause or etiology, etiology is a, a medical term for cause of a disease, is unknown and there's no effective treatment. Some other disorders of the skin include psoriasis, Psoriasis is similar to eczema. It's a chronic disease. It's got itchy red patches of skin. The difference between psoriasis and eczema is psoriasis is marked by silvery scaly skin. So see um, psoriasis has those silvery patches. That's the difference. So if you remember psoriasis and silver, there you go. Just note the spelling. It starts with a silent P. So psoriasis has those silvery scales. Um, and it can appear on the scalp, the elbows, and the knees. The cause or etiology is unknown. Uh, vitiligo. Vitiligo is a pigment disorder. Uh, it produces pale, irregular patches of skin. It can also affect the hair and the eyes. Anywhere you have pigment, um, you can have vitiligo. It's more noticeable in, in people with darker skin tones, but it doesn't cause any other symptoms. It doesn't, it's not painful. It doesn't cause any itching or burning or anything like that. It's simply a, a loss of pigment in those areas. All right, we're almost done. This last um, small section of the text discusses uh, manifestations of internal diseases. And it makes a distinction between signs and symptoms. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the difference between signs and symptoms. But a sign is something that you can see. So think of like a street sign, for example. Um, so a sign would be something like a rash. You can see a rash. That's easy. A symptom is something that the patient experiences or something the patient tells you, like itching. You can't see itching, but the patient can tell you that they are itching. So a sign is something you can see. A symptom is something the patient is experiencing, like itching or pain. Okay? And then the last condition um, that we're going to talk about is something called dermatomyositis. So again, if you come across a big, long medical term, I think um, this was discussed back in chapter one or chapter two. If you come across a big, long medical term you don't know, you break it down. You know, itis, start with the suffix and go back to the prefix and then the root. So itis, you already know, means condition of. Uh, derm means skin, myo means muscle. So this is inflammation of the skin and the muscle. Super simple, right? So dermatomyositis, inflammation of the skin and the muscle, is a condition that's often associated with ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer can appear four to five years after this disease is diagnosed. It's, uh, it's associated with muscle weakness. Uh, it has a characteristic rash around the eyelids. 
and on the joints. There's also another form that's seen in kids called juvenile dermatomyositis, which can cause profound muscle weakness and rashes on the joints. So that's about it. That's all we're going to cover for this um, mini lesson. I thank you for your attention and tune in for the next one. Thanks.